Rebic, Rafa, tira, gol! Raffaele Leao, oggi segna Leao, la mia giornata è iniziata così, oggi segna... Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Sempre Milan podcast. I'm your host, Oli Fisher, joined once again by Anthony Torgrud. What's up guys, glad to be back. Um, yeah, every week starts the exact same with Oli saying the same thing and me saying that. And, and we have Maddie, right. so... And I'm mm-hmm. excited for this week's episode. Same exact <laughs> yeah, thing we... every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bang on. Consistency is key. We've got a more consistent lineup than Milan do at the moment. Um, you know, given us three have been on back to back weeks now. Um, but we've got a busy episode ahead anyway because we've got two games to recap and two games to preview and some other topics to talk about. So this should be an interesting one, definitely. Um, and I am going to be conscious of time throughout this. Don't worry. Um, but yeah. I guess we better start with the with the game that came first chronologically. Um, this was a bit of a different one for me to recap anyway, because um, I was actually at the game. It was amazing to be able to see the team live in the flesh for the first time in about two years. Um, it was at Anfield. It was our first Champions League game for seven years, so over half a decade. Our first ever game at Anfield, which is amazing considering the history of the two clubs, uh, especially in, in the Champions League. Uh, first game against them since 2007, that famous final where we got revenge in Athens. Um, didn't go our way this time. Uh, we all feared, shall we say, um, on, on our preview podcast that this might be a little bit of a step too far for our young squad, you know, a squad where most of the players haven't played in the Champions League. And it did prove to be uh, just that. You know, I think it's fair to say that for the first 35, 40 minutes of the game, we were overrun. Um, pretty much all over the park by a more intense and a fitter team, team that's used to higher intensity than we are in the Premier League. Um, found ourselves a goal down. Thankfully, a, a, an important penalty save from Mike Mignon kept us in it. Went in 2-1 up at the break. Uh, second half kind of reverted to type and it was wave after wave of pressure and we couldn't really get anything going. Um, but overall, I walked away thinking... We lost by a goal. We had our moments, you know, some real memories made in that away end. Um, Really, really obviously enjoyed both the goals going in. It was carnage. Um, And uh, we weren't completely battered either. So I think there were some positives to take from it. Yeah, I'd say there was actually a lot of positives to take from it. You know, one of the things we talked about a lot last season, um, and I guess the the tail end and the previous one was when when COVID hit, um, the lack of fans we thought was going to benefit a young squad, you know, they won't have to worry about being jeered, especially with the history leading into that, how we just were used to getting jeered in our own stadium. Um, but they, they thought that was going to help the young squad. They wouldn't have to worry about the nerves. It'd settle in quicker. And we were right. You know, they look great. Then we get here, and this is our first one in a hostile environment with a, a huge atmosphere with a packed stadium. And, uh, they were nervous. They looked scared. You could tell yeah. they were making real rookie level mistakes for the first 30. Um, everyone was sloppy. And it was probably the worst 30 minutes of football I've seen from us in in, in quite a while, to be honest with you. Um, it, it could have Which been is weird to say. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, it, it could have been like six or seven mil towards towards Liverpool in those first 30 minutes. Like it was brutal. Um, and then something just clicked and and Rebic scored a beautiful team goal and then was it Brahim got the next one that Mm -hmm. was also kind of created by Rebic as well um and all of a sudden we're 201 at the at the break and halftime came at the best time possible for Liverpool because we obviously had the the tide on our side at that point but they were able to settle in um we got an immediate third goal that was called off after the halftime break if that wouldn't have been called off if it was good I think I believe it was offside I'm not yeah it was offside yeah um if it wasn't then that could have put the game away, you know, three, one, like it's, it's pretty rare to come back from that, but nonetheless um, it didn't count and they, they came back, but I thought the second half was a totally different story. I thought we looked a lot more even um, still, still outmatched. Like there's no denying. I think Liverpool is a top five side in the world at the moment. And uh, we brought it to them. We've scored more against them than any other team has this season. So, you know, there, there's nothing to really be disappointed outside of those first 30 minutes. And that can be chalked up to the, the first champions league game in seven years. And, you know, everything about it that we all know, we've talked about it a million times. Like, there was a lot of pressure and it got to them, but they settled in and 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 we turned it around. So I'm, I'm not disappointed. Those away goals might come in handy towards the end of the group stage. Who knows? Um, Atletico and Porto drew. So we're actually not in a bad spot, you know. It's it's still doable. 
Yeah, I my biggest worry going to this game was that we were going to get absolutely destroyed and ruin all the momentum from the first three games of, this, of the season. Um, we did lose a little momentum. We looked like shit in the first half, minus our two goals. Uh, it could have been way worse. Yeah, way worse. Um, I'm overall happy with the performance. I'm happy. I mean, I'm not happy with the result, but based on what it looked like on the field, you know, in th- in three years when people look at that result, they're not going to think about what happened on the field. They're going to say, oh, three, two, that's a close game. So yeah. we uh, had a close game and I'm excited for uh, the Atletico game next mm. week. Strange, isn't it? Because the way that things have been for us over the last 18 months when we've had this resurgence under Pioli, um, we are naturally always gutted when we lose a game because we feel like we're in every single game. And like, you know, when we when we lost away at Spezia and we lost away at Lazio, we were like, that's that's a disgrace. You know, the team should be ashamed. But this was the first time in like two years where we've lost a game and I've, you know, I've instantly not felt gutted. I thought, eh, you know, we were beaten by a better opponent on the night and we still had our moments, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, there's two ways of looking at the game, I think. The first uh, is that it's you know, a baptism of fire for those lads. Um, as as you said, AJ, the, the atmosphere. Now, I'm Maddie, Maddie will back me up on this, but the, the Anfield atmosphere uh, can be regarded as a bit of a myth, you know, a lot of the times um, when it's not a big game, they're not up for it. Um, but I have to say, and I'm not a big fan of Liverpool at all, but the atmosphere was incredible. Um, it was in, it was just really, really loud. So God knows what it was like for, for so many of those young players out there on the field. And that's where we could have used someone like a Zlatan or a Giroud who has experienced it before, just to say, you know, just let's weather the storm here. Um, and the other part of it is that um, from a tactical point of view, this was a pretty hard first game for us because we're coming up against a team that tries to do what we do, but they do it a lot better. And they've got two or three years ahead of us in, in where they are at, as a club. Um, and the quality of their squad and everything that comes with uh, consistent Champions League football and obviously the revenue of the Premier Leagues. Um, So I wasn't surprised to see us, you know, like rabbits in the headlights after the first 30 minutes. We were completely overrun. It could have been worse. We could have been out of sight by half-time and that would have been really damaging for the morale. But I think the the main positive that we showed is that all we need is is five minutes. We need a good five-minute spell to hurt a team. Um, and and we are never out of any game while there's a goal in it, and that for me is is the biggest thing that we can take from it. Um, would I say that I was like proud? I mean, yeah, I guess proud of of the resilience that we ended up showing after a difficult start. Um, but we still got to hold our hands up and say that we were pretty much outplayed in every single area and deserved to lose the game. But I think it will be a very different game at San Siro because we play them in our final group game, and it could be big. Never know, depending on how the results go between now and then, that could be a, a winner-takes-all qualifier, let's say. Um, but, yeah. And there's um, a good chance they've already qualified by then as well, you know? Like, if, if they yeah. sweep the I rest of the... I don't think so. The they, dude, every group stage that they've been in the past four years, they've barely gotten out of the group. They've been in some tough tough spots, yeah. you know? Yeah, so um, I, I do think that it's going to be closer than we all expect. Wasn't it the season that they went on and won the Champions League that they only qualified in the last... Group yeah, I think, so, I think yeah. it was against yeah. Napoli too. So yeah. hopefully uh, it's not a Serie A thing. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. hope not. Um, well, Napoli beat them in the in one of those legs. So yeah, yeah, they did. You know, yeah, I think that was with Ancelotti, right? Was it? Yeah, I Could think so. Been. Yeah, I think I think that's right. Yeah, yeah sounds about right. Um, tops and flops from the game. Um, somebody said in the comments, and I like the idea of doing like our player ratings, but when we've got two games to recap, it's quite a lot to go through every single uh, player that came on the field and, and uh, give them a rating. But um, I, I think that this, I, I haven't really watched the game and where I watched it from was like the fifth row back in the bottom corner of the stand. So I didn't get a, as good an overview of the game as I do normally. Um, but I will say that what a I hard re- problem to have. I know, I know it was tough. And and the bus journey from London up to Liverpool, uh, there and back combined, was a 13-hour round trip. Um, really? Because of, because of traffic and because of motorway closures on the way back. Oof. So I, I got back in to the, to the flat at half six in the morning on, on oh, that's Thursday. Awful. Yeah, it was, really bad. It. was that bad. I will say... What does that um, drive like on a normal day? That's like a, a three, three and a half hours, but obviously... Yeah. Mo- um, 
coaches can only go 60 miles per hour so whatever that is in kilometers per hour um so that naturally 40. makes it longer than yeah than yeah um so yeah that was I interesting i mean i slept on the way back um that was fine you know but i will was say on the trip milan was, fans yeah the, there were two coaches full of milan club london okay. Uh, which was really good, you know, all members and stuff. Um, and it was a, it was just generally fun, you know, a lot of chanting and singing and uh, everyone were cracking the beers up at like 10 a.m., which I thought was commendable. Um, and, yeah, the way back dragged a bit, but it was it was still fun. Met a lot of good people, met a lot of the guys at Milan Club Dublin as well, and they're all fantastic. So it was good in that sense. You know, there were 490 of our fans there. Could have been more if there'd have been a bit more notice so fans could come over from Italy. But, you know, tickets went on sale the Monday before the game on the Wednesday, so there wasn't much choice there. Um, but overall, it was just great to be there, you know. I kind of still have to pinch myself that I was there for our first Champions League game in seven years, first game at Anfield and all that. Um, but, yeah, it was, a, it was a great occasion and it's just made me, like, I can't wait for uh, to get back to San Siro, hopefully in early January, um, and, and support the lads again. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, back to it. Tops and flops. Um, so yeah, Brahim Diaz and Rebic stood out as the only ones in the first half who were trying to make things happen. Like they, they showed a bit of composure on the ball. Once Brahim started getting in between the lines, that's when the problems started coming. Um, so I'll pick those two out. And um, I think there were a lot of players who were kind of absent. You know, it, it wasn't really, we didn't get a grasp on the midfield through Kessie and Benacer like I hoped we would. Um, I think they were both a little bit off the pace. Um, and and Teo had a bit of a torrid time um, defending their right side, which is obviously Salah and Alexander-Arnold, who gets forward quite a lot. Um, but my man of the match would have to be Tamori. Um, he kept us in it, you know. Um, not often that a centre-back can be part of a team that concedes three goals, and we're looking at him thinking, wow, you know, what a player. Yeah. And one of them, his own, an own goal on him, you know. Mm. But but I agree. Like, if you were to look at the scoreline and say, pick your two best players in a 3-2 defeat, and I were to tell you it was the goalkeeper and the center back that conceded an own goal, you'd probably mm. laugh me out of the stadium. But <laughs> that's the truth. I mean, they, they were the best players. Like, leading up to this, we all said, Mike's fantastic, but we haven't seen him tested. We saw him tested and tested again and again and again. Mm. And he's the first person since 2017 to save Mohamed Salah penalty. Uh, do you know who, who was the one before that? Yeah, the, key, the keeper was Jonas Lossel. And uh, yeah. I was there for that as well. I, I've yeah, been there so for Ollie's the good luck charm. Yeah, his, maybe. Yeah. Salah's bad luck charm. Um, yeah. But Mignon was fantastic. Uh, he kept us in the game. He kept us alive the whole time. Very happy with him. I mean, you could argue he made some mistakes on, on the goals, which fair you know I'll, I'll never say no to that like he still conceded three of them um but but it, it could have been eight or nine it, oh. it could have been really bad um it's more like fantastic he's shown that he's the only center back that really has experience against a premier league side like the yeah. the pace on tamori saved us a lot i mean he came out of nowhere to be everywhere and it, it showed so really happy with both of them um i'm, I'm gonna pick either of them as my top players mm-hmm I'm going to go Mike and Rebic as my top players yeah. because w- without Rebic, both those goals do not happen. That's fair, yeah. 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 I think Rebic has been, and we'll come on to it with the UV game, but I think Rebic has actually shown, and he's backing up my agenda from last season, that Rebic should absolutely be an emergency centre forward over Liao every time because he's showing that he knows how to do it. You know, He played in a front two at times while he was at Frankfurt, um, and I think he's just occupying the right spaces. He knows he's not going to bully physical defenders you know he knew yesterday that he wasn't going to get the better of Chiellini and Bonucci in a physical battle so he was smart with the spaces that he took up and the times that he dropped in and the link-up play so that's good to see you know it's he least... beat them both in the mental battle though he certainly did yeah he outsiked them and I love to see that um the, but yeah <laughs> that killed um, me when he did that oh man <laughs> and oh. um, and this is harsh because, you know, he's injured, so I'm kicking him when he's down at this point. But um, I thought Kier showed that he maybe isn't going to be up to the pace um, like that, you know. Uh, I won't say that he got completely rinsed or anything like that, uh, and it was always going to be tough, but, you know, it was a tough, tough examination for him. And Calabria struggled a little bit at times. He got rinsed at one point by Naby Keita, um, mm. and I thought that was a little bit of a, you know. Um, but... 
yeah, it's hard to. There were a lot of players that were like between a five point five and a six point five. You know, there's, there's no huge standouts as being like, wow, they were awful or wow, they were match changes. You know, but not too bad. Uh, you know, what's funny is if you pull up the who scored, I was just going to do it to pick my flop. Um, they gave Tamori the worst rating, but it's because of that own goal. It, it just yeah. kills Gosh. your rating so, so much. So they don't understand football. Yeah, but the next one <laughs> besides that was was care. So. Yeah, that, that, I mean that kind of adds up, which makes sense. You, you can't give your center backs high ratings when you concede three, but mm -hmm. yeah, Kier just uh, he's just a little too slow. I mean, he's a fantastic defender, but in a game against a team like Liverpool, where they're literally just speed, speed. and shoot, like you got to be a bit quicker. And and it's not a fault of him. You know, you can't. I guess you can speed train, but like everyone's got their you know their their cap. You know, it, mm. that's not like muscles. You can't grow more speed. You know, so. Uh, it is what you, it is. Do you think that uh, Liverpool underestimated us on the attack? No, I don't think so. I, I think both of our goals were very good team team plays. I mean, when we started the first thirty minutes, and that at best we we made two to three passes in a row before yeah. giving the ball away or sending it out for a throw in, and then all of a sudden we have a six, seven, eight pass one time flick play that that leads to a goal like that would catch anyone off guard yeah yeah i think that i don't think they the one, underestimated us Maybe if you look at it from a bit, but... from a liverpool point of view you'd be a bit annoyed that nobody tracked rebic's run for the goal like he was yeah. wide open to slot in that equalizer and then uh for the second goal we kind of did what we did for the first goal by you know playing it initially down the left side and then using um a bit of a central overload to um to then get the ball into space again out wide on the left and the cut back and you know tried his best robertson to stop it on the line but brahim was waiting but we had bodies in the box that was the thing you know it was three to aim at in the box so um we definitely took the confidence from that equalizer um but yeah it's what it is i will say um jordan henderson i've, I've watched him twice now in live in the last few weeks i watched him uh, play for England at Wembley. Now it was against a rubbish opponent, but um, was in tops tier, so I could sort of have an overview. And watched him live at Anfield, and uh, I think he's kind of underrated as a player. You know, um, he can run the game on his day. Uh, he's really good at distributing the ball, and he's, he plays a, an important role in the midfield. Um, so I think that just shows what we're up against. These are players that are like memed by fans of other clubs. And yet, when we come up against them, you realise they're not that bad. You know, they're, they're not terrible at all. Um, so yeah. The irony of that is when he came on, I was like, all right, we're in good shape. It's Jordan Henderson. <laughs> and he scored that screamer. And I was like, yeah, okay. yeah. I thought he was really good. I'm not going to lie. I thought to Mane him. was going to do way more than he did. So mm. did I. I thought he was going to be a real threat. I was, happy I was just going to gonna say, started, I was going to say with, um, with the Kier thing, we might have been in even more trouble if they had started with Mane and Salah and played Jota down the middle. You know, him dropping in as like a false nine and then having, as they do that spear run, you know, Salah and Mane both running in behind at the same time. I mean, that would have been tough to deal with. Uh, but thankfully, they didn't play that. And um, I don't think Origi was terrible, but still, it's a bit of a different threat to deal with. Um, yeah, that's it. Not terrible. Um, but we, we start the Champions League group stages with a loss. The other result as you mentioned, was a draw between Atletico and Porto. Um, we'll do the preview, obviously, uh, next week, but it makes our na next game against Atletico at home massive. I won't say a must-win, because, you know, they're still a good team and nothing's decided in result. the first two games, but we definitely need something. Yeah, need a point. I'm yeah. also going to say, uh, in the comments last week, you all said I was way too harsh on Ibra, and he's injured again, so that harshness was rightfully deserved. <laughs> I mean, he's uh, apparently going to be on the bench on Wednesday night. So, um, and to be honest, I think that's a dumb decision. I, nah, I don't just leave him. Yeah, don't even Tat. don't do anything with Ibra until the Atletico game. Like that's yeah. the most important one. We're gonna we're getting six points from the Spezia Venezia. You know, the, the rhyming clubs. Like, don't don't risk Grandpa. Like, it's more Venezia, of Venezia Spezia because it's in that order. But. Whatever it does, I don't care. They're, yeah, they're right. both getting relegated. It doesn't matter. Hey, I did pick easy on Venezia. Well, it yeah, we've got to go there. Do. We don't want to get we'll assaulted. Get um, yeah, so yeah, those Venice fans are real mean. I hear. Yeah, you're gonna throw me in the Grand Canal. Like, okay. <laughs> they're like they're like the Fulham of uh, Serie A. Like small ground by the water. You know, nobody takes them that seriously. But yeah, um, 
Next game then, uh, Juve. Here we go, let me get the thing. Um, so we played last night against Juventus at the Allianz Stadium. Last season we won there 3-0. Given the injury crisis that we had, we had uh, no sort of natural number nine who was fully fit. So we had no Giroud, no Ibrahimovic. Um, we were missing midfield depth, Bakayoko out, Krunic out. Um, Messias, nobody knows what's happened to him, but he seems to have been on a burger binge over the summer and he's like, still not back to full condition. Um, and then Calabria was out as well, which was not ideal. Forced a few changes. Uh, Pioli decided to mix it up a little bit for this one and played Tamari as a right back uh, in inverted commas because um, it didn't really look that way when we were when we were in the game. Um, went a goal down early to Alvaro Morata, which was a bit of a, bit of a, um, a low blow. It was lucky. You know, for, it was yeah. lucky for them. Not often you concede from your own corner kick. Which I think reflects badly on us. You know, that was early in attentiveness. Um, yeah. I, I said at half time when things weren't going so well that uh, I thought as much as it was physical, like fogginess, you know, the players having tired legs and stuff, it was more mental. Like the decision making wasn't its usual sort of crispness, preciseness. We were giving the ball away a lot. We didn't manage to dominate the midfield in the first half like I thought we might do because that was our one area of strength against the 4-4-2. We didn't generate anything really scoring chance-wise and it was clear that Juve then were going to sit deep and try and defend that lead. But they didn't manage to do so. Um, I guess the sign of a good team is one that manages to pick up a positive result even when they don't play at their best. And in the end, we could have gone on and won that game. But I'm looking at it as a point game. Yeah, it's definitely a point picked up. Um had we had our full strength starting 11, it would have, well, it would have been a win, but uh, oh, yeah. a draw would be two points dropped, you know? The way, I, like, this was Teo's worst game in a Milan shirt, and it comes yeah. down to this this shoehorned formation that we tried. I mean, we didn't know that we were going to need to do this all week long, you know? Like, we only had a couple days of practice, so they clearly didn't get the the three five two down or whatever we were running, but it was a three at the back. And that made Teo have to play more defensively. It didn't allow him to get forward as much. And he's not very good like that. So he wasn't making those runs. And then no one's doing the overlap for salad makers. And without that, he's kind of worthless. Like, that's why everyone's like, we need a new right right winger, blah, blah, blah. He fits in our system with the overlap from Calabria. But by himself, he's not a natural right winger. He doesn't look mm -hmm. strong enough doing it. He doesn't have – he can't fall back for defensive duties if if there's no one there overlapping to protect, you know. And, and it left him open the entire time. And that, that's where we were getting exposed. Um, I hate to say it, Kier getting hurt was probably the luckiest thing that could have happened to us because it yeah, forced us to make a change. Yeah. And once Kalu came on, we, we well, it, we, it, the second half is when we switched back to the old system. But once Kalu came on, we looked a lot better because he's at least more in tune mentally with the right back position because he's played there before. Um, but the second half, we we turned it around. We went back to the old system. Teo finally is making overlapping runs. Salamaker has some to overlap. And all of a sudden, we're working again. We're creating chances and boom, Rebic goal. And then Kalu almost scored another one. So had Kalu started from the first minute or Calabria not been hurt, we win that game easy because Juve were toothless. They didn't do much. They well, they had one goal that was They waste a, a lot counter. of time. They yeah. Did. Can I read out that I stat at this point? Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, there was yeah. 95 minutes. So obviously 45 plus two added, then the second half plus three minutes of added time. Uh, that was 95 minutes. The ball was in play for 48 minutes. Um, Pioli came out after the game. He was the one who got told that stat um, and said, it's no wonder that teams like us struggle in Europe against intense sides. And that's right. You know, you're playing the game at a snail's pace. The stoppages every few minutes. The referee kind of lost control of the game with some of the tension that there was. Um, and then, you know, we've just played a few days ago at Liverpool where you literally don't get a break for 90 mm -hmm. minutes because they're just at you all the time. And I think it's a valid point. It doesn't help the product, you know, from a from a broadcasting, from a Serie A brand point of view. But as, as us fans, especially with us trailing in the game for most of it, it's just really frustrating. You know, we mm -hmm. need to do better. I say we, the, the officials and, and everyone connected with how the game runs needs to do better. It wouldn't have been like that had they not had such an early goal. I mean, they yeah. literally parked the bus because they knew they, they couldn't do anything else. And playing 10 men behind the ball, like you're always going to have a, a better time defensively when you're just parked like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, they were just holding their lead. That's what Allegri does. He's desperate to get his first win since April of 2019 in the league. So he needs to do what he's got to do. And, Good and he failed to do that. Thank you. I have like 300 likes. So happy of that. 
Um, easy, oh, easy, easy. But still, um, yeah, I mean, we could have won that game. Kalulu had his chance at the end. Great save by Chesney on it. If that's a, someone who's more attacking prevalent, then probably a goal. I mean, he shot it straight at the keeper, but I don't expect much from a, a third or fourth string right back, you know, <laughs> or technically yeah. center back. 18 right back. or 19. 20. Yeah. But yeah, still. Look, oh. Kalulu's going to become a legend for this club. I mean, he's never played anywhere else professionally for the first team. If he sticks out and, and does well, every time he comes on, I'm like, this kid's not bad, you know? It's so. funny because uh, while Kalulu was having a, a fantastic game, the ex-Leon kid was having a fantastic second half for us uh, against Juve. Um, a Leon kid called Lucas Paqueta was busy scoring past Donnarumma for, for, for Leon. So that was a, an interesting dude, He looked one. fantastic, dude. Uh, nice. It's annoying, isn't it? Because he, he's doing really well. I still don't disagree with our decision to sell him. Uh, same with Locatelli, to be totally honest with you. Oh, look at um, Snowy's. And Andre garbage. Silva. And all these are like, they're circumstantial. Like, it's one thing to succeed in Syria. I don't think the ingredients were there for either of them to succeed in Syria. But they've gone to I, leagues I where the they're better could suited. succeed in this team. I, in yeah, this possibly. Team right now with this system, he could have. I, he was never mm-hmm. going to work under Jim Paolo. Forget that. Locatelli. Oh, Paqueta. Yeah. Oh. It, it just, I, I don't think um, his. His personality never worked under Jim Paolo. I mean, there was the he whole. He only took a look at less though. Brazilian. He um, did, but I think he and, was and so defeated at that point yeah, already because he came in with so much hype, and then it was his third coach in in less than a full season. Yeah, and then we we shipped him out, and I don't think that was fair on him. I think he deserved a better chance, mm. and with some consistency, he probably would be doing well. And but you know that was how much did we get for him? Like twenty five, twenty mil. Pretty much bang 20 on mil. twenty mil. So we we so caught, we, we made we didn't make a loss. Someone. I don't yeah. remember who we reinvested it in, but obviously it was necessary to get us where we are. So you know it is what it is. But I when he scored, he turned back and pointed at Donnarumma. It was funny, and then he did his little dance thing. It was nice quality. So there must have been some tension there during the Milan days. I bet. Yeah, I'm just remembering back to the time when uh, Michael Giampaolo famously said he needs to be a bit less Brazilian sometimes. I'm thinking the yeah. more and more I think about that, that is incredibly racist, first of all. It's um, extremely. Like, how do you yeah. want to play for then, a club after that? Like, also, and then I remember, didn't he score or he got an Brazilian. assist? <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, there's so many world-class yeah. Brazilians that do the stuff that Giampaolo was saying don't do. He like, was a terrorist, was Giampaolo in football <laughs> in terms. He destroyed a lot of creativity in that team. Suso, let's play him centrally. Oh, I said it so many players. times during Pioli's season, I was like, Jim Paolo set us back years. Like, Pioli had to do so much to get us just to that sixth-place spot. That Not just tactically, season. but like like a psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah, he needed to heal those players. And here we are in a position where you fast-forward the timeline, we're semi-unhappy with getting a 1-1 draw at Juve, despite us having an injury crisis. Well, so it's because we're always dropping about. points against these relegation sides. It's so frustrating. <laughs> they are a second bottom, which is just yeah. fantastic, isn't it? Third bottom now, not now they're eighteenth. But ah, oh. um, so we're we're joint top anyway. Uh, Inter yeah. uh, beat a process meet six one at the weekend. <laughs> but I say, Jez, I can't take credit for that. It's um, still great. Beat the flat cat oh. Mihailovic, uh, who just seems to bend over for them every time. But it is what it is. Um, so we're behind on goal difference, but we're virtually joint top. Inter's schedule is a nightmare coming up. Um, I so. don't think it's that crazy as everyone else is saying, but I do think they're only getting four points out of their next five. Yeah, so, I mean, that would be enough to set them back a bit. I mean, I don't know, because I can't say, oh, I talked them up before the season and picked them to finish second, but I also picked Juve top, so I know nothing about the game. Um, But still, I don't think they're a bad side. I think I think Juve out yet. They could. Oh, yeah, they'll win their next (laughs) game against Spezia, and then we'll see what happens, you know, once they get that first win under their belts. Um, The talent's still there, and Chiesa, you know, if he'd have started, maybe, I don't know, whatever, this isn't Sempre Juve. Um, But, uh, yeah, and then... Uh, Inter's next game is coming up a tough so we've got uh, a couple of games coming up that we'll preview in a second that we should be taking six points from Napoli play tonight we're recording on Monday uh, Napoli could go top tonight and keep their perfect mm. record um, which uh, I real quick to... though tops and flops for you there. oh yeah tops and flops good shout uh, yesterday um, oh, I mean it's too obvious to say the top is Rebic and I'm guessing one of you two is going to say it so I'll yeah, stay I'm clear sure like it. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I think it would also be too obvious to say Tonali. Now, I don't want to be that guy. He had a good game. He had a very good second half. He won 
the battle against uh, Locatelli. You know, it, people were billing it as if it was like, it showed a lot of bitterness from some of our fans to make it out like, well, we need to get one over on the kid who used to play for us. Uh, I didn't really see it that way. I just wanted a good performance from Tonali. But he did have more touches, more accurate passes, a far better pass accuracy, more key passes, more crosses completed, uh, more chances created, more shots, more shots blocked. He was just better in every single category, which was good to see. Um, but I'm still going to go with uh, Tamori again. Um, I don't know why. There was just something about... I felt sorry for him being planted on the right side of the defence at first. Uh, I don't think that helped him. And I, I didn't really understand the logic behind doing that. But then with the turnover that happened because Kier had to come off, Kalulu coming on, um, that second half was as close to a perfect defensive performance as you're going to see. Um, there were times when they were trying to hit us on the counter to get that second goal and they came close. He made a crucial intervention challenge last man at one point um, that actually had Maratta appealing for a penalty when it wasn't at all. Um and yeah, I thought he was really good. Uh, but I've gone for my pick as being a bit left field on that one. Yeah, um, I'm going to change mine, actually. I mean, Rebic is fantastic. He, I think he's the first Milan player ever to score in three straight games against Juve. Someone in the comments fact check me. I know you guys are going to anyways. I'm sure someone did it in 1966 or something. Um, but but I, I'm actually going to pick Kalulu because he changed the game. Once he came on, everything changed. The system, the game, the, the goal the almost goal, so I'm going to go Kululu. Yeah, that's a fair pick. I'll go Tonali. He's been oh. unbelievable since the season started, and uh, Juve's a, a big game at Juve, and he did not shy away. Yeah, I agree with that too. Flop. Now, this one for me is uh, quite difficult because there are multiple candidates for this. Um, as AJ said, I think it was Teo's worst game in, in a Milan shirt. What for me? So we were obviously there's a, a Milan data tweet that you can find, and it shows the average position of each player. We were definitely playing a three at the back in the uh, first half before the injury. Um, it seems to me that whenever we try to artificially push Teo further up the pitch, he has a worse game. He's almost better with the surprise factor of coming from a genuine left back position. Um, and I think Juve were well prepared for the way that we were gonna. Um, approach it after those first few minutes especially with the goal uh, behind them um, but I'm going to go with Kessier, you know that's that's two games in a row now Anfield, tough one admittedly he is still 24 blah 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 but the supposed president of the team has kind of gone missing in two huge games there and I bet his agent will be saying mm, I'm trying to get you 8 million here you're not exactly doing doing, uh, doing me any favours with that but I thought he looked slow, predictable on the ball um, tired more than anything now whether that's a mental cloudiness that comes from everything hanging over his future or whether he's just knackered and he's still not back at 100 percent condition because obviously he missed the first two games of the season i don't know but uh, we need to start seeing something maybe the next two games being special in the next year we're obviously going to lose both of them now i said this but maybe that's a bit of a blessing he can get back to feeling what it's like to dominate in the midfield and maybe it persuades him to be like, I've got a pretty good offer here. Then he signs and then we can move forward together because he's still ultimately one of the best midfielders in the league. But he, he just had another off game. That's what I'll say. That's what I'm thinking. I think it's a tactic to get a, a lower contract. I think he just, he's too nice of a guy to, to accept this uh, or to, to want this eight mil that his agent's pushing for. So he's playing bats. So his agent's like, look, we got to accept the six and a half, bro. Love it. That's yeah. all I could do. Like yeah. um, yeah. no, I, I think the, the easy easy out is is Teo because he, realistically he was the flop of the match um a really harsh one to pick but I'm also going to go with it care I mean he didn't yeah. play much but that's why so looks a bit off the pace didn't he yeah again or Daniel Maldini he had like 40 seconds I'm, just, I'm kidding <laughs> why are you always hating on him man <laughs> I was so pissed when I saw him coming on though because I, I thought I thought we had a corner kick at that last moment. So when Maldini's coming on, I'm like, we just saw him not eat on the, the oh. Liverpool game. I was like, yeah. bring on Pellegri if we're just doing it for 40 seconds. I for, thought Pellegri's for injured. Corny. I have no idea. No, he was on the bench. With you. Um, okay. What was interesting... Yeah, it was, it was a throw -in. What was interesting is, I remember Daniel Maldini making his senior debut, and that was when we had a 93rd minute corner against, uh, I think it was Sassuolo or Sampdoria at home. I remember thinking, why the hell are you bringing him on for a corner? It's the last mm -hmm. kick of the game. 
you know, bring on a bring on another centre forward or even bring on a centre back. You know, they're more of a threat from corners. Yeah. And he kind of did the exact same again. You know, he got more time at Liverpool, which I thought might have been damaging for him, but he did not too bad. But then that yesterday, I'm just thinking of all the players to throw on. It's a guy who's yeah. probably never scored a header in his career. You know, um, no, I yeah. think that I he has to be showing something in training that yeah. they like. Yeah, his last name. <laughs> no, dog. They they just offed his older brother so fast. So he's clearly doing something. Yeah, Paolo knew. I, I knew them genuinely all think he got minutes against Liverpool because he turns twenty next month before the next game, and they don't they would they want to have three generations of Maldini teenagers debuting in the Champions League. Yeah, but That's they would the have put him on. They would have put him on. With like a minute left, not he's a ten. Well, he's now the youngest because the, they're like, ooh, no good. He's the youngest of the Maldinis to um, appear in Europe in terms Are of his sure? dad. Uh, his he's granddad also was twenty three. Worst of the Maldinis. <laughs> Ches- Cesare was twenty three when he made his European Cup debut, and Paolo was twenty. I thought, which I didn't know because Maldini made his debut when he was like Paolo Maldini made his 15. debut when he was like sixteen. I thought yeah, it was 15, but, um, yeah. but no, he was 20, uh, 20 years and however many. No, he was exactly twenty years old. When he made his debut, because I remember looking up the the data afterwards. Oh, it, it was now, his birthday. I, yeah, it was his birthday. Okay. I, I wondered, and I need to look this up. It might be because we were in the UEFA Cup or something okay. in the That's years prior. Because so, yeah. we struggled in the mid '80s when he was coming through. You know, we didn't really fight for for titles and stuff. Then Berlusconi came along, and we got really good. So maybe that was like right. his first chance. That would make sense. Um, yeah, right. That's that done. Venezia Spezia. Love this. What's my um, flop? So- Damn, just my fucking throw yeah. me under the bus. <laughs> You're our yeah. flop. Who am I over <laughs> yeah, here on the you. bottom? Just so- Go for it, mate. Who's, uh, your, who's your flop? And I'll even remove this. Cassier. Okay, brilliant. For the same reasons as me. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> now the rhyming couplet. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the Kevin the board. let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. So what anyway. do we know about Venezia? It's a beautiful city. They have Great two city. Americans. Can't wait to go. Um, they do have two Americans, yeah. Um, so the interesting awesome thing jerseys. This, Ollie doesn't like them. No, I don't like them. I think they're over. They have a the female on their team that is very attractive. They have a what on their team? A female on their women's team. Oh, that would so make sense a lot of if, they, if they had a female. <laughs> oh, that's another belt. I bet the uh, whole women's team is women. I don't know. Some of them you have to doubt. Um, probably we'll leave it either. there. Yeah. <laughs> so we're coming up against uh, Venezia and Spezia in the next few days. Um, they actually played each other at the weekend and Spezia won their first game of the season, 2-1 in the last minute. Now, I think, A, that shows um, where Venezia are at, really. I think they're going to struggle this season. I've picked them to go back down, um, yeah. as I think I think you both did. Um, and. Not me. I hope that and maybe it. maybe it shows the kind of uh, spawny nature of Spezia as well. And we know that they're a bit of a ball ache of a team. We lost their 2 0 last year. Um, but I still don't rate Thiago Motta as a manager. Um, so their squad, I'm looking down it. There's not loads and loads of names that st- stick out as people I know. And I'm trying not to be um, disrespectful to them here. But they do have an American called Gianluca Busio, which yeah, does teammate. actually. Who's the other? It's they like do. Tanner, Tanner Tesman. Tesman. Uh, there you go. He's Tesman. actually pretty hyped out here. Mm-hmm. I haven't Lucia seen him is more typed, I think. You think so? Okay. Well. Yeah, he's made they more also, stars for Valencia, so I'm assuming so. Fair enough. They also have um, Mattia Caldara, who's on loan from us, and they also have Ethan Ampadu, who's from Chelsea. Really? Um, they get Ampadu? A, yeah, that's an interesting yeah. loan. Um, but yeah, they Obviously, they're not full they're of household also owned names. By Americans. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, their manager Paolo Zanetti, who is obviously a mix of Paolo Maldini and Javier Zanetti. I don't really like that. Uh, but Paolo Zanetti has done a good job with them. However, you've got to remember they finished fifth last season um, and, and came up through the playoffs. Uh, so I don't know if the caliber of their team is is particularly brilliant. Yeah, um, I mean that that says that over the length of the season. They're probably going down, but they have a few one-off games in them where they could pull something out. Hopefully not against yeah. us. Yeah. 
coming up through the playoffs is obviously good because it proves that they can perform in high pressure games. Um, but they're they're currently, I want to say, they're fourteenth in the table. Um, they're gonna, I think, they're gonna be fighting against the drop for most of it. Um, and that that is the extent of my analysis on Venezia. I just don't have a big enough sample size to go on, really. Um, but with that being said, Venezia is seventeenth in the table. Spezia is fourteen. Uh, yeah, got yeah. mixed up. Um, Both above you, in... Yeah, God, God bless them. Um, with that being said, I think we're going to get the win. I don't think it's going to be all guns blazing like Cagliari was. Uh, I don't think we have a ton of energy and intensity bottled up in us. It's been a demanding last week. I would be more than happy to get a couple of goals in the first half and then just take it a bit steady. Um, because it's, I would it's like not like the end of the week and then we get a, a week off. I mean, we've got you know games coming thick and fast. We've got Atletico week on Wednesday. Um, yeah. so yeah, I'm gonna go two nil. Uh, two nil works. Um, I think Pellegri should start, and then mm-hmm. if we aren't up at halftime, bring Rabich on. But I, I think even though Giroud and Zlatan will be on the bench, don't play him unless it's absolutely dire. But I like don't think losing. it will be. Unless we need a yeah. goal. Yeah, as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. If we need a goal, sure, bring on the Yeah, you can goals, give them 15 but... minutes and tell them they don't have to move as much. They don't need to press. Yeah, you know, stay in the box, wait in. until yeah. the counter. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. I mean, na- we'll do- we'll name an 11 and-, and you can see if you disagree. But for me, if-, if there was any doubts about how we should line up in the UV game because of the threat they have in this one, this is the, the time when you can play Florenzi at right back, I think, and probably get away with it. it and is, then uh... tomorrow... Go on. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask if Calabria is coming back or how serious I don't is know. Like, oh. Atletico apparently will be the game that he's back. Same with Kier. Then start Kalulu. He he yeah. deserved it after his game. He I just think it. him a more attacking fullback maybe, but Kalulu definitely has a, has a fast, shout. Though. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. I think Kalulu is an attacking fullback he and just, he just hasn't had a chance. Well, he's, he's never scored. Um, I'd say Florenzi. Whereas Florenzi has yeah. plenty, of, uh, plenty of goals in the bank. But yeah, I know, I know yeah. what you mean. We'll um, do Kalulu right back, Florenzi right wing, and let the makers kind of. Yeah, out. I think he needs a rest. To be fair, yeah, um, and yeah, and then obviously Romagnoli tomorrow should be the centre backs with Kier's injury. Yes. Teo plays again. I think. I think. I mean, there might be the temptation to give Balotelli a game because Teo is not really been at the races. So maybe this is the game to rotate a little bit. I think that's a good call as well. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about let's, him. Let's honest. do that, and then. Uh, I keep Kessie in there and hope that he can and play himself start into start this time. And start Benacer, give Tenali another breather. Um, and then, yeah, Florenzi right. It's going to have to be Brahim down the middle again, isn't it? Because Messiah still isn't fit. Maldini. Maldini maybe. He's got minutes in the last two games. Maybe. Like if maybe we're taking this, this game as lightly as we possibly can, we, is that we, a mistake? I mean, we don't have a choice. It's always a mistake, but yeah. like, if that's what we're doing, then let's do it, you know? I think it's going to be... I don't think he's going to start Pellegri for whatever reason. I think it's going to be Rebic and it might be a relay a job. Um, yeah. And and then and then Liao on the left again and then we'll see. Uh, one thing I will say is an observation on the last two games. Uh, I just don't think Liao and Teo have anywhere close to the same chemistry as Teo and Rebic do. It just isn't there. It's just not... They don't seem to click in the same way, but I don't know they if will, that's because. Yeah, I don't know it if that's just, because Taylor's not been at it, it and and um, and Liao's like not got anybody to find really with with passes yeah. and all that. But um, yeah, I don't know. Well, just, and Liao didn't play a whole lot in that position last season. Yeah, you know, so it's mm. it's just going to take him a little bit longer to get get in the swing of it. Yeah, fair. Um, yeah, so that's the eleven, I guess, and yeah. predictions. I think we're all going too well, unless Maddie's got something. I also to do. predict a draw. Really? I why? Yeah, I don't know why. I'm just feeling like uh, we are going to go into the game thinking we're hot shit, and it's going to bite us in the ass. It does happen. Um, just looking here. Um, we'll move on to Spezia now. Um, Spezia only have 19 players in the squad. And some of them don't even have numbers. At least this is of the Wik- as of the Wikipedia page. So maybe they're quite depleted. I don't know. Um, What's their um? They, they play midweek as well, right? Who do they play? Oh, they play Juve on Wednesday. They do, yeah. So they congrats, do. Juve, on your first win of the season. Yeah. Um. 
Jeez, that is ridiculous. Yeah, I know. Right, so it does say as of 23rd break. of July, so maybe that's been updated now. Um, but, yeah. I mean, there are some names in there, to be fair. Uh, I like Martin Ehrlich. He's a good centre-back. Gerwin Zoart was at PSV. I remember that. Um, I remember uh, Daniel Iverde. I'm sure Daniel Iverde scored against us before. Um, right. He's had a bit of a career in Italy. Um, and then they've got Ambala Zola, who's a, an interesting striker. Um, Jacopo Salas, we were linked with him quite briefly um, over the summer as a potential backup left back. I don't think he's terrible either. Um, they they have a player under contract called Lorenzo Colombini. That's funny. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I yeah. think this is going to be the blowout game, to be honest. I, I think they're going to be, like, like you said, they're a thin squad. Uh, they're playing Juve midweek. We're ideally going to rest most of all our players. And then this game, we're going to put in some big boys to get minutes before Atletico. I wouldn't be surprised to see Zlatan either last 30 minutes or from the start, to be honest, and Giroud, the the other portion of that game. So I think this one's a 3 or 4 nil. Do you know, I, I hope you're right on that, but I'm just learning more about Spezia as I go down their page. Um, they lost to Udinese. Uh, the game before last. And the guy who scored the winner in that was a guy that Milan were linked with repeatedly for for like months and months called Lazar Samadzic. And he came yeah. through Hertha Berlin's academy and he got a move to Leipzig. And we were like, oh, we've missed out on another player to Leipzig. And they binned him off after a year to Udinese. So goes to show they don't get everything right either. Um, yeah, and then they, they, they won at Venezia and they got Juve in midweek, as you say. They won in the Cup as well against Pordenone. Not that that's a massive scalp or anything. Um, but yeah, I'm going to predict that this is another tight one. I, I, I don't know what it is, but maybe I'm just scarred from losing there last year. But this feels like a different team that we're facing this time. Um, but I'm going to say we edge it, edge it 2-1. Yeah, worst manager as well. I mean, I think Italiano added a lot of value to that squad. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go 2 1. Win. Maddie? 3 0. 3 0. Dub. I agree. Nice. Uh, right, let's do some questions quickly and then we shall wrap up. Um, so, do. Uh, I love Kyrie asks, uh, do you think that the contract renewal is affecting Kessier's game? Uh, we briefly touched on it. I would like to think no, because I like to think that any professional footballer has the ability to shut off outside noise and focus on just playing a game. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. There has to be some reason for a bit of a drop-off like he's had. He's gone from dominating every game to being a little bit lacklustre in the last two. I want to put it more down to fitness than anything else. <clears throat> I think we yeah. may have may have rushed him back a little bit. or um, you know, we, we need to keep an eye on that. Maldini said that he's been in contact with his agents for a year and a half. So we yeah. know he could perform during talks. Um, yeah. Remember, he had his first injury with our team recently, and he's just coming back from that. So it's it's fitness, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I hope it's not uh, contract talks. So I'm going to say it's uh, fitness, but I have no idea. Mm. Tough one. Only there's one of them. All, all we can do is speculate. Really, I'd love to know what goes on in the meetings. Um, like when Masara went to Bologna to meet with Kessie's agent, I'd love to know what was said in that because they were there for hours. Apparently, I mean, like, how long can you possibly negotiate before you get bored and start talking about other stuff? But that um, means that like it's hopeful. Like, like if they were meeting for hours, that means that they're being constructive instead of like, oh, we're not budget on this. All right. Yeah. Fuck yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> See that's you true. Actually. Yeah. 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 Um, Dan, oh, Christian Espinosa, uh, should we sell Cassie and Romagnoli this January transfer window to avoid losing them for nothing? I don't think we are going to. I don't think that's our policy. I think we're either too proud or um, we we want them for the full season to help us achieve our targets and, and that kind of thing. There has to still be the hope of renewing Cassie, but I think romagnoli has gone. Like It doesn't sound like we're negotiating over his renewal at all. Um, so if the no. opportunity came up to get something back for him in January and we really don't see any reason to keep him beyond the summer, then I would do that because he is still valuable. He's in his prime. He's our club captain, you know. He's an Italy international. Um, so, yeah, I, I would consider that. I think, we, I think we're kind of resigned to allowing him to leave right now. I mean, Mino's publicly saying he's going to Juve on a free. Like, that's ridiculous. But I think we're going to see 
in the next coming games a resurgence. We already are seeing that right now, and we might go, hey, Kier's old. He's getting hurt now more often. Roman Yoli's looking better. Maybe we renew him and hold him on to, for the future. You know, I mean, like you said, he's in his prime. Like, I, I think there's a, a lot of good years left in him, and I, I think we'd be silly to let him go. I was all for yeah. last season when he was in the, the pits, but he's climbed out of them. He's doing well. Keep him, you know? Hmm. If we could hold on to him for a few more years, I said do it. The renewal it's, that be old, it's that old thing of uh, if we were to buy a replacement who was just like him, you know, 27, an international, a leader by status, um, it would cost us more than it would to probably keep him at the same salary yeah. or with a little bit of a pay rise. So you have to factor that in. I agree with Kier. I think... Um, he's going to suffer more and more injury problems. You know, he's 32 um, and our playing style gives him a bit of a battering. I think I won't be surprised if he misses like half the season for us in the league in terms of games, which would be sad, obviously. Um, but we knew this about him last season. Um, his muscles just aren't the same as perhaps what they once were. So we need to prepare for that. And Romagnoli, the more he steps up, the more important he's going to feel and the more he might give thought to the idea of staying around. Um, but I can see him going to Juve or Lazio, one of the two, and I don't think Lazio will pay what he wants. Well, so. Yeah, I'll say I don't think that Lazio is going to pay him his contract. And at Juve, every game's a big game, so he's going to suck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah uh, he did good against them this week, I thought. Yeah, he yeah he he, he, uh, he was fine. Yeah, uh, Dan Window. A lot has been said about the growth and improvement of the team. What do you think of Pioli's improvement? Squad depth helps, but recently it seems he's got his subs right more often than not, which was a criticism last year. Yeah, good point. Um, I think I mentioned it, you know, a few times that um, Pioli acknowledges that he's not the finished article as a coach. Uh, he's made tactical tweaks and adjustments. He has got better with his in-game changes. I would say that much. And overall, I think he's benefiting from um, a squad that's getting stronger window by window. But at the same time, you've got to give him full credit for the job that he's done, considering where we were when he came in to where we are now. And yeah, he's, he's adapting, he's changing, he's not fixed. I think he's like half manager, half coach. He does a good job of keeping everyone happy and motivated. Um, and the dressing room has a nice balance to it uh, of youth and experience. But at the same time, he, he's, a, he's a good head coach as well. Um, I think he's made a lot of players better. You know, just because they get a year older in the calendar doesn't make them automatically a better player. They have to have it coached into them as well. Um, and I, I think he does a good job of that. So I'll give him praise. Yeah, I, I think it's it's hard to criticize him. He's done a, a really good job. And like you said, his man managing has improved. His, uh, his substitutions have improved. That was my main criticism of his last season. So um, I'm happy with it. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> Purely improved as well as the squad. Oh, 1,000%. Mm. One thing I will say about Pioli, that there was like one particular like uh, subplot to his managerial career that I think perfectly sums it up, or his career at Milan anyway. Um, the 5-0 that we lost at Atalanta in 2019-20 versus last season when the pressure was 10 times as high to get a result, to get the win, to get into the top four. And that was our one of our most well-rounded performances. I know we won with two penalties, but to stop them scoring in a game that they also needed to win in, really, um, that was just incredibly professional performance. And um, I was chuffed to bits with that. That, to me, showed his development as a coach perfectly because he'd figured out how to beat a team that had been his crypt tonight. So, yeah, fair dues. Uh, final one from Wolfgang. If we win the Scudetto, what do you guys think about signing Vlahovic? And do you think it would be financially possible? Uh, I think we sign him whether we win the Scudetto or not. You think that yeah, he's the guy? Just... No, I don't think he's a guy. But I also think that top four, it, it just takes top four. It doesn't need this. The yeah, Scudetto. yeah. Because yeah. we're, we're freeing up Zlatan's contract at the end of the season. There's no way he renews. There's very little chance we even allow it, even if he wants to. I mean, he said he's going to play until he can't. But then he also said that he needs to take it slow and he can't be there for everything this season because he's, he's just not what he was. So why are we putting all that faith in him? I mean, he's my favorite player of all time. I'm not slating the guy. But next season, he'll be 41 years old. Is that who you want leading your line on $8 million a season or $6 million a season, whatever it is? Like, free up that contract. Give him a role inside the club that's not hurting your salary cap. Hmm. Bring in a guy like Vlahovic if he continues to do well. Like I, I think that makes the most sense. So I think that's disclaimer what we'll do about about Zlatan, and I think this was cleverly negotiated. 
Uh, apparently, his seven million net salary for this season is actually three and a half million fixed, and the rest of it is bonuses based on appearances and goals. So we've protected That's ourselves good, there. That's least. really nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think he would be happy to sign that as well, knowing like I might not be able to give you everything this year, unfortunately. Yeah. So That's fair really play. Cool, that, actually. that was that was good. Um, and also, like if he was still holding up. Um, he may even do another season, but then it would have to be like two two million fixed, and uh, and he'd have you know, to accept the bench role. There's no way. Yeah, he, he really would. Like it almost impacts of like Luca Toni towards the end of his career, kind of thing. Um, yeah, Vlahovic to me, I mean, he started the season really well. Um, again, he scored over twenty last season. He's going to be in big, big demand, especially because I don't think he's going to renew his contract, which expires in twenty twenty three. Now, that's two years' time, but obviously, come next summer, it'll be one year, and Fiorentina will be left with a position like Chiesa, I guess, where they have to sell because they want to generate the money that they feel that he's worth. And I think we'll be knocking on the door. I think we we want a long-term option for the centre-forward position, um, and then we can transition Giroud at 35 to being a backup again, um, Mm -hmm. which is probably fair on him. I mean, he's got back pain. It's like he's 70 years old or something, but um, he'll come back fine from that um and yeah that i think that'll be the big investment we make next summer will be in a, a new striker i think we'll try to get creative again with potentially bringing in a new winger uh, apart from that pretty much everything looks like it might be set maybe another center back if Romagnoli leaves but it's not it's not a bad position to be in where we have a pool of money hopefully from another top four finish to allocate into um a, a crucial position moving forward happy days boys happy been days. A pleasure. It's been great. Um, so, I mean, I said it last week. Hopefully, in a week's time, we um, we can review two wins. I didn't firmly believe it last week, but this week, maybe, maybe in seven days, we can be talking about two wins. Um, let's see. Um, but for the time being, thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, if you made it this far, and also, um, we'll pass on condolences to the family of Jimmy Greaves, ex Milan player, uh, Spurs legend. Um, passed away over the weekend uh, which was sad um, a legend of English football as well um, but yeah on that note uh, I've been your host Ollie Fisher um, find me on Twitter at Ollie Fisher it's on the screen if you're watching on YouTube been joined by Anthony Talgrew yeah uh, it's been a really good one um, thanks to everyone who listen our viewership keeps going up the likes keep going up and it means a lot to us so thank you very much yeah comments keep on going up shit talking to me keeps on going up so bring it on no. <laughs> that was a good one Mm. Uh, yeah everyone get involved in the comment section comment your tops and flops for each game and all that kind of stuff and if you agree or disagree with any of our views uh, the more interaction the better and we really appreciate everybody who watches and uh, gets involved with the community that we're trying to build so yeah thank you very much and we'll catch you in a week's time eccolo Ante Ante in area di rigore Ante 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 Ibra gol vediamo se è buono ce l'ho da buono ce l'ho da buono ce l'ho da buono